everybody needs to learn programming. But that doesn't necessarily mean everyone needs to be a programmer. Let me explain. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Now to get started with this video, I kind of want to first explain what programming means in the sense of everyone needs to learn programming before we actually talk about why everyone needs to learn it, and then most importantly, how we can actually implement the fact of everybody learning programming. So to get started, what is programming? Many of you, if you watch my channel, you probably think of programming as building websites or building some piece of software, but in actuality, programming just means that you are talking to the computer. You're telling the computer exactly what to do, and it is doing exactly what you tell it to do. Now, for most of you, that probably entails building some form of website or web app, and it's generally going to be a fairly complex application. Take, for example, YouTube where you're watching this. It is a fairly complex application. It requires tons of programming knowledge. But programming can be used to build things as simple as a Hello World application. The problem is, though, that if we want to teach everyone programming and the importance of programming, teaching them how to build an application like YouTube is way, way too complex and requires years and years of experience in order to build, while Hello applications are just completely useless. All they do is say Hello World. So people don't really realize how useful technology and programming is by building a Hello World app and a YouTube application or something large like that is just way too confusing for them to follow. This is why I think that the sweet spot when it comes to programming is building out small applications that help you accomplish tasks or do things that you otherwise couldn't do. Maybe it makes doing things quicker, maybe it does things you never could do before. Either way, it doesn't really matter as long as the program is small and helps you accomplish something. So now, why exactly should everyone learn programming? I mean, it's great to be able to build these programs that help you accomplish small tasks, but does everyone need to know how to do that? I mean, really? Well, it's pretty obvious to see how maybe someone that's in a business scenario, such as a manager or an accountant or a finance person that deals with Excel spreadsheets all the time, having a you know, solid understanding of programming and how to build simple programs would be really useful because it saves you hours and hours of doing manual labor in Excel or manual data entry and things like that, when you could just write a program that'll really simply do those things for you. It'll convert values from one way to another and allow you to really you know, do your job even better because that eight hours you would have spent manually doing this, you now have a program that you wrote maybe in 10 hours, and now every single time you need to manually do that, you click one button, and instead of wasting eight hours, you just spend 10 seconds waiting for it to compute. Now, this is the really obvious example where you're like, well, duh, that makes sense. Learning program is perfect for those types of people. But what about people in other types of jobs? What about, for example, someone that works at fast food flipping burgers, you know, some minimum wage worker flipping burgers at McDonald's? Why would they need to learn programming? I mean, they're not going to rewrite software. They're not going to build a robot that flips the burgers for them. So clearly they don't need programming, right? Actually, that's wrong. They do need programming because programming can help them out. Take, for example, if you're an hourly worker, most likely you need to clock in when you're at work. And then when you leave, you need to clock back out. This is something I had to do all the time when I was working hourly as a janitor, and it's something that most people across the country that work hourly need to do. Even salaried workers have to do this sometimes. And many times, it's very easy to forget to clock in. Maybe you get to work, someone calls out your name, and immediately you go start working because there's some kind of problem, and you forget to clock in, or maybe it just slips your mind. Whatever it is, you didn't clock in. So now you either have to you know, hope you can manually enter the time in and you probably have to get your boss's approval and maybe hopefully you know, remember what time you actually showed up, which is a pain because you generally end up shorting yourself. You don't get as many hours as you could. And it really inconveniences your boss or manager since they have to approve this type of scenario and it's just not good overall. I mean, in the worst case scenario, you could actually get fired for this if you are constantly forgetful and constantly forgetting to clock in because the manager can't really trust you since they don't know exactly when you got there and it's just a hassle for them to deal with so they could just hire someone else to do your job, especially a job such as flipping burgers where it's very easy to find people to do these kinds of work. So instead, what this person could do if they're very forgetful is they could learn very basic programming skills in order to build themselves an application on their phone, a mobile application that will alert them in some way when they arrive at the place that they work based on, you know, geolocation. So when they arrive at work, their GPS will essentially say, hey, you're at work and it'll, you know, vibrate for you, send off an alarm, do whatever it needs to do to get your attention to remind you to clock in. And the reason you can't really do this with just a normal alarm app on your phone is because your work schedule probably changes very often, especially if you're working fast food, for example. So you can't just say at eight o'clock every single day, Monday through Friday, I'm gonna set an alarm. 
because you know maybe you'll work at eight o'clock Monday and the next day you're gonna start at two o'clock, the day after that you start at three, super varied. So having an application that'll just notice when you get to work based on your GPS position and alert you is a really easy way to remember to log in and clock into your you know, time card. And it's actually not that hard to build an application like that. You just need really basic understanding of how to create a mobile application and you need basic understanding of how to interact with the GPS inside of your phone. Both of these can be learned rather quickly as long as you just have a base understanding of how to use programming knowledge, how to create variables, loops, and that kind of stuff. As long as you know that, it wouldn't take very long at all to create this type of program. And now you may still be thinking, well, Kyle, that's kind of a far-fetched example. I mean, I never forget anything. Well, that's great for you. That's awesome. I forget things all the time, though, so this would be very useful for me. But also, all of these examples I've listed so far are purely based on people at work and what they can do at work. But every single person also has a life outside of work. And that life outside of work has tons of mundane, repetitive, you know, monotonous tasks that you have to do all the time that could easily be improved by a small amount of programming knowledge. Whatever it is, you know, whether it's with a computer or machine or something, you can, you know, write a program that'll help you optimize some tasks that you do repetitively or often. And having that just basic small amount of programming knowledge is incredibly useful. Just take, for example, creating some kind of finance budget. Maybe having a little bit of programming knowledge is going to help you out in Excel to create a few custom different commands that will allow you to do some extra calculations. That alone is amazing knowledge that you could have and is going to save you a ton of time. Not only that, but as technology advances, more and more things in day-to-day -day life are going to use technology. They're going to have abilities to create custom code for them. And just having that ability and knowledge to be able to customize and work on technology is incredibly important. I mean, take for example, being able to work on your house or your car, that's a really important skill to have so that you can save money and time fixing things that are simple on your car or your house, instead of always calling a mechanic or a plumber or an electrician to do this for you. It's the same thing with technology. As technology becomes more and more of our daily lives, Having the skills to improve, repair, and upgrade these pieces of technology is incredibly important if you want to keep up with the modern day-to-day -day life. But how exactly are we going to teach everyone programming? Because at least where I live in the United States, most schools have zero required programming classes, and many of them don't even have optional programming classes. It's just not something you can learn in school. Some may have some optional programming classes that are maybe HTML or CSS based, but in reality, while that is a really fun way to learn programming because it's very visual and you can really see what's going on, it doesn't actually teach you the core concepts of programming such as, you know, variables, conditions, loops, functions, and those types of things, which are really what are useful for when you want to create programs to help automate and optimize your day-to-day -day life. Those are the things that you need to understand. So while schools may have some of these types of classes which teach you HTML, CSS, or other things like that, they're really not teaching you the core things of programming that you need to learn in order to optimize and improve your life. Because if you just take an HTML and CSS class in high school, chances are you're never going to use it again and it's not going to improve your life in any way at all. So what I think we should do is add in required programming classes to high schools, because pretty much everyone has to go through some form of high school curriculum, at least in the United States where I live, and having those programming classes in there is going to help introduce people to skills that they're going to have and be able to use throughout the entirety of their lives. The hard part though is schools are already overstuffed with tons and tons of required curriculum and colleges are constantly requiring students to know more and more information before they can become accepted into their school. So it's pretty difficult to add in even more required classes on top of the already massive amount of required classes in high school. So I think instead of adding on more, what we should do is replace content that is currently in schools. Because right now you're very limited on optional classes if you go to high school in the United States. There's just so many required classes, you have very little expression of your own self. So I don't think we should take away that expression, we should instead replace some of the less useful classes or the classes that have overlap with programming. And in my opinion, the classes that have the largest overlap with programming and possibly the least amount of use for students is advanced math classes. Now, it's incredibly important for students to learn, you know, basic algebra and things like that so that way they can just go through day-to-day -day life being able to calculate things such as taxes, mortgages, you know, interest, all that different stuff. That's really important to understand. But do people really need to understand, for example, calculus or trigonometry or, you know, pre-calculus? A lot of these classes are maybe not so useful in day-to-day -day life. And the reason they teach them to you in school is, well, one, to prepare you for college if you go down the route of learning things like calculus in college. And secondly, and most importantly, to teach you basic problem-solving skills. 
because if you can solve a complex you know calculus equation it doesn't really mean anything for the calculus side of things but it means that you have the ability to look at a problem apply knowledge that you have and solve that problem well that is the one thing that programming is absolutely amazing at teaching you i mean just writing and programming is pretty much like a giant problem solving equation it's like a huge math problem of problem solving that you go through and you eventually find a solution for and you know your solution may be different than someone else's but you found a solution to the problem so i think it's very safe to say that we could replace some of these very upper level math classes that maybe aren't very useful in day-to-day -day life and serve no more than teaching you problem solving skills and then shove in those programming classes in their place so for example i think it'd be great if we were able to teach mandatory required two semesters of programming inside of schools it's difficult, I think, to squeeze all the information you need into one semester of programming. So having two would be ideal for really taking that programming knowledge to a level that is useful beyond just, you know, academic problem solving purposes. I then think those advanced math classes can just be left as optional classes for the school where students can take them if they want to, you know, go through a career that requires those different math classes. But for all the students that don't need those math classes that probably don't even enjoy those math classes, they can have these programming classes instead, which will more than likely help them out in life more because it'll give them the same level of problem solving skills and it'll also give them the ability to optimize and improve their life through writing custom programs. Now, I know this isn't something that's going to happen overnight and probably won't even happen anytime soon at all, if ever, but it's something I really hope that schools consider because I know when I was in high school, I had absolutely no idea what programming was until towards the very end of my senior year of high school when I happened to have a class that had programming as an element inside of it. I didn't take it because of that. I had no idea what programming was, but because of that small section of that class, I learned what programming was and you know, followed my entire career based on that. And if I hadn't had that by chance, I would have never known what programming was and who knows what I would be doing right now. So having that in classrooms also just opens people's eyes to the possibility of programming in computers because it's not something I even considered when I was younger. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out my other videos, which are going to be linked over here, and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.